Hello everyone and welcome back to the good stuff. We are continuing the Morphe saga and last video we left it off uh, after the Staunton saga has finished. Uh, so the match never actually happened uh, and you know, uh, you know, you, you've heard everything there was to hear. Okay, not everything, you could hear a lot more. Like I said, if you guys want to really dive into this, go grab Lawson's book and, you know, uh, simply know everything about it. Uh, but, you know, in some uh, short stories, you, you've basically learned what happened. But now uh, we entered the match against the, the champion of the old world the the, the german uh, so well then the prussian master adolf anderson uh, and it's uh, it's simply one of the greatest matches uh, in, in chess history but it was a problem organizing this match as well not because anderson uh, had a lot of terms like uh, for example staunton uh, but because morphy promised his family that he would be back in the united states in time for christmas and um, well there simply wasn't enough time uh, they wrote to anderson and they uh, asked him if he would be able to come to paris they wanted to, uh, the the match to be held in Paris and he said that he would not be able to come uh, before some mid-December, maybe December 15th, and uh, Morphy did, did not have enough time to travel to uh, to Braslau, where, where the match could have taken place in the Braslau Chess Club, uh, so he said that, unfortunately, the match will not happen. But then, uh, unlike uh, unlike uh, Howard Staunton, uh, Anderson himself wrote to Morphy, and he said that it would be it would be a crime against chess if that match didn't happen. Uh, Anderson did not have any terms, he didn't care for the stakes, he said we can play it for honor only, you know, it's not a problem, uh, but but since you already came all this way, you know, you, you should definitely face me. And uh, Morphy still was not convinced and, um, uh, well, uh, he was uh, uh, a lot, of, uh, not a lot, uh, all, all the bigger chess clubs in London and in Paris wrote to Morphy that he should uh, reconsider that maybe he, maybe, maybe he could skip Christmas with his family. I don't think it was... Uh, uh, Morphe's uh, sort of thing to, to you know spend Christmas with his family. I think it was more of a family thing that uh, they requested this from Morphe that he be back for Christmas. Uh, but it, it seemed very important, and he was very re reluctant in uh, you know de denying them this request. But uh, everyone then wrote to Morphe. Anderson himself wrote to Morphe. Everyone wanted Morphe to face Anderson. Uh, you know they, they really tried everything for for it to happen. And then even uh, then Morphe was not convinced. He said no. Unfortunately, I will not be facing Anderson. Uh, I'm going back to uh, to the United States. Uh, but then uh, Morphe's doctor said that uh, Morphe was too ill for the trip and then he should definitely postpone his trip at least uh, at least a month uh, and that was enough time uh, for him to accept the match with uh, Adolf Anderson uh, and so Morphe remained. But um, it was not uh, a very enjoyable time in Paris. Morphe had um, uh, intestinal influenza and, uh, well, he was uh, being leached regularly. So he lost a lot of blood uh, and he did didn't leave his room for two weeks, so he was very, very weak. Uh, and even when Anderson arrived in Paris, he he came to Morphe's room and he, uh, you know, saw in what condition Morphe was in. And the match, I, I think it was Friday, and the match should uh, take place on a Monday. Uh, and Morphe said, "Nope, everything will be perfectly fine. We're we're gonna have the match. Uh, it's it's not a problem." So uh, everything was arranged. Uh, Anderson uh, came to Paris, and uh, you know. Uh, it, it seems that we we will have the, the the greatest chess match the world has ever seen so far, you know, for for 1858. Uh, but before that, uh, okay, Anderson still had some time. He went uh, sightseeing. It was his first uh, time in Paris, I believe. Uh, and uh, well, he met his old friend Harvitz, and you all know uh, Harvitz if you've been following the Morphe saga so far. Uh, and Harvitz has been saying to everyone that he, uh, well, uh, everyone knows he faced uh, Adolf Anderson before, but that he defeated him and that he has a positive score against Anderson. Uh, Anderson denied this and he said uh, that's simply not true, but you are welcome to uh, play me here and, you know, who, whoever wins, wins. Uh, they played a a match of six games. Anderson won three. Harvitz only won one, and two. The two of the games were drawn. So Anderson won that match very nicely. He also faced some of the local players. So and uh, you know disposed of them uh, very easily. So he was more than ready uh, to, to face uh, the, the great Paul Charles Morphy even after. Uh, after his trip, uh, uh, but uh, like I said, he he will face him uh, only on Monday. Uh, and Monday arrived, and uh, well, uh, Anderson uh, came to the uh, to the game uh, on time. Uh, the the game was agreed upon to be played at twelve o'clock. Uh, so uh, you know. 
uh, in the afternoon uh, but Morphe was late some half an hour he still wasn't feeling all that great and he was uh, they say that he was pale as a ghost when he arrived to the game uh, but he still wished uh, to, to continue the match regardless of anything because it uh, consumed enough of his time and everyone else's and I guess he was also afraid that if he was now uh, you know he, I guess he didn't want to become the one who's postponing the match now after his trauma with uh, Howard Staunton so the match commenced uh, and uh, as they say this game at uh, the first game of the match lasted for seven hours but we're going to talk a little bit more about this uh, so now let's dive straight into the game this is the first game of the legendary match uh, in Paris 1858 Paul Charles Morphy versus Adolf Anderson uh, as the title suggests the old versus the new world so Morphy with the white pieces opens with e4 now let's see uh, how Anderson deals with this we have e5 uh, knight to f3 by Morphy knight to c6 and bishop to c4 uh, Anderson replies with bishop to c5 and of course we all know what Morphy plays here that is of course b4 Morphy goes for the Evans gambit uh, and Anderson not a stranger to the Evans gambit himself he uh, achieved many many great victories in the Evans gambit so of course he knows how to play against the Evans gambit so bishop captures on b4 the best way to play against it is to accept the gambit with c3 and bishop to a5 now and Morphy strikes in the center with the d4 we have e captures on d4 and now Morphy castle so this is all uh, very very standard stuff even by modern standards uh, and now knight to f6 uh, going after the e4 pawn so Morphy advances it to e5 attacks this knight and Anderson now shows that he is well versed in the uh, hidden arts of the Evans gambit as there is only one good move in this position and that is of course d5 without this move uh, black's position simply uh, falls apart so here you could trade captures captures uh, well not that captures this captures uh, but Morphy uh, prefers to keep the, the light square bishop so bishop to b5 we have knight to e4 by Anderson and now c captures d4 and uh, uh it's very interesting you could also go for queen to a4 but it's it's kind of a drawish line uh because after bishop captures on c3 attacks the rook we're gonna capture on c6 with check b captures we're gonna capture the knight knight captures attacks morphe's queen morphe captures with check bishop to d7 attacks the queen while also the queen now defends the rook here and after the queen moves now we're gonna play queen to e7 and this is now perfectly fine uh for for black and not uh, not a lot for for white to uh, look forward to here you you can trade queens you don't have anything better than that um capturing on c7 not all that great bishop to b5 is coming and you don't you don't really care about this i mean it's uh black who's up in development and i mean white played the evans gambit and of course capturing the d4 pawn uh runs into knight to e2 check and you lose the queen so uh, it's not very ambitious uh, but um uh, it's, it's definitely the strongest move Morphy played c captures on d4 here and it is now as of move 10 that this position has never been reached again so this is now uh, the original Morphy versus Anderson first game uh, we have castles by Anderson and now as there's uh, not all that much to be done here Morphy captures on c6 Bishop captures b captures and now queen to a4 uh, attacking the bishop here and ready to recollect the pawn here so Anderson goes back we have uh you, you could also play queen to c2 but this kind of uh, seems to be with tempo uh so bishop to b6 and now queen captures on c6 Morphy uh grabs the pawn here and now bishop to g4 it seems like Morphy is the one who's playing the Evans gambit but it feels like Anderson is the one that uh, you know forces Morphy to, to, to kind of play his game because it's Anderson who's developing here it's Anderson who's attacking and look at Morphy uh the well basically the king of, of rapid development is uh, you know uh, disregarding his peace development so here bishop to b2 even though the knight here is attacked there's not a good way to defend it you can play something like knight b to d2 to defend it because this knight is needed uh, for guarding the d4 pawn so here we'd simply capture and now you could capture with the bishop and then we still mess up your pawn structure and if you capture with the knight then of course you lose the d4 pawn and this pawn is kind of important because now black has a pass to d pawn so instead after bishop to g4 we have bishop to b2 by morphe allowing this capture because yes you will uh, bust open the king side but he has some plans he's gonna play king h1 bring the rook to the g file and try to attack Anderson's king this way so bishop captures on f3 g captures attacks the knight and now knight g5 with some ideas of maybe capturing on f3 so knight to d2 Morphy develops and defends uh, and now rook to e8 uh, very interesting is knight to h3 check 
uh, because now uh, the the king has to do something. It doesn't really matter what uh, king king g1 uh, king h1 king g2. Uh, we're just gonna bring the queen to h4, and it's a, it's a very nice position for black. Uh, but Anderson first plays rook to e8. He says, okay, but why not bring the rook into the attack as well? So here we have king to h1. Morphy now uh, uh, frees up the g1 square for the rook, but Anderson does not allow it. Knight to h3. Uh, we have f4 by Morphy. Uh, now saying, okay, uh, are you maybe interested in a pawn? But uh, Anderson not not really fond of any pawn grabbing. Uh, uh, you know, uh, says no, no. Let's let's not go for the pawn. He says uh, queen to h4. Now knight captures an f2 with check. Definitely is an option, uh, and he leaves uh, the d5 pawn. Uh, free for, for, for capture. So Morphy grabs the d5 pawn. Again, uh, it seems like he's playing Anderson's game because uh, all of Morphy's moves are basically responses to, to Anderson's moves. I know all the moves in chess are, you know, responses to your opponent's moves, but here it's, uh, well, it just seems all very much forcing. So Knight captures on f2 with check. Morphy has to move the king, king g1. And now uh, you could go here, for example, to threaten checkmate, but Knight f3, uh, you know, uh, defense checkmate attacks the black queen, so it's not a problem. So so after king g1 we have knight to d3 attacking the morphe's bishop on b2 and now we have bishop to c3 uh defending uh well just moving the bishop out of harm's way and now c5 is very interesting here by anderson trying to you know open up this diagonal because the king well is on the same diagonal as the dark square bishop uh but um uh, instead of this, we have knight captures on f4. Uh, it's not grabbing a pawn. Now it's uh, it comes with a threat of just, well, the queen is attacked and also we're threatening knight e2 check to pick up the bishop on c3 as the bishop is undefended. So here, queen back to f3 and now comes knight to h3 check, king h1 and now knight g5 attacking Morphe's queen and defending uh, against queen captures on f7. But by, by, by grabbing this pawn, uh, Morphe also got the EDF file to be used for attacking purposes. So queen back to g2. Now, if this uh, diagonal could open up, then it will be great for, for Morphe's attacks. So rook a to d8, bringing the last rook into the game. And now rook to g1. Uh, best for Morphe probably is knight to f3. Just trade off a pair of knights and, uh, well, then, you know, uh, we we, we kind of go into this game. Captures, captures. Uh, we put some pressure on f7. So let's say bishop captures on d4. Morphe captures on f7. King h8. And now you get this position. Even rook f4 can be played attacking the queen and the bishop. Uh, but then Anderson would have this beautiful queen captures on f4. No doubt both of them saw this. And that's why Morphe decided against it. Queen captures. And now bishop captures on c3. Uh, bishop captures on c3 attacking the rook and the e5 pawn. So you're not going to uh, even be left with your with your past e pawn and after the rook moves we're gonna pick up the e5 pawn and it's uh well you're not winning this with white but you might lose this with white so uh, morphe decides against it so after rook eight to the eight we have rook to g1 by morphe and now h6 anderson says all right how are you ever gonna move my knight from here to deliver this checkmate i i, I don't see it happening so rook a to f1 morphe also brings his final rook into the attack and then now queen to h3 anderson says okay my position is better i'm up a pawn let's trade queens uh morphe not interested in this he goes queen to c6 and anderson offers a queen trade again queen d7 we have queen back to g2 now uh, h4 could be problematic if h4 comes but still knight to e6 will defend the g7 so bishop captures on d4 grabbing another pawn we have bishop captures queen captures and now knight to f3 now you cannot trade uh, then checkmate is definitely coming uh, and also the queen is under attack so here uh, we have queen to d5 uh, with uh, with uh, a double attack on this knight and well you are probably going to play something like rook e6 rook to g6 and then it's just really really bad for white uh, so here morphe could trade but it's uh, i mean it's not really a great position if you go knight captures on g5 h captures and you trade queens rook captures you could capture here but then anderson captures here and you're up two pawns in a rook and pawn end game black black will win this so instead, after queen to d5, we have h4 by Morphe, uh, but now knight to e6, the only square, of course, uh, that defends checkmate. So queen to g4, Morphe now unpins, tries to get the knight somehow into the attack, but now queen to c6 by Anderson. Uh, we have rook to g2, 
uh, now uh, blocking this uh, diagonal. So now the knight can move. It's no longer pinned. And now rook to d3, adding another attacker here to the knight. So rook to g1 is now not possible. We would simply capture the knight. So queen to f5 by Morphe. And now uh, rook e to d8. This rook is attacked. Uh, so we have to be careful. Uh, Anderson defends it. Uh, and now what do you play here? Well, Morphe could win a pawn here. He could play queen captures on f7. It's possible, but it's, it's still not a great position. Queen captures, king captures. Captures knight d4 opens up a discovery here. Rook to f3. This is the move that uh, uh, Anderson uh, would have if, if this, you know, happened. Because now uh, you can't really go uh, here grabbing the queen because we just captured the rook with check. So you would have to capture the rook with the rook to deliver check to the black king. Then we give up the queen this way. Knight captures and then, for example, rook to d3. White black is up only one pawn, but it's such a uh, good position for black that the, there's no playing this for white. You can't move the knight uh, because check picks up another pawn. You have to play a passive move like rook f2. Then we just play king g6, king h5. Uh, and, you know, it, it, it basically plays by itself. So instead, after rook e to d8, Morphe plays queen to f6. Now saying, okay, you do have pressure here, but then I'm going to be attacking your rook. Of course, the queen cannot be captured. The rook here is pinning the pawn. So queen back to d5 by Anderson. Again, uh, not a lot for Morphe to do here. We have queen back to f5 and now rook to d1, offering a trade of rooks. So rook captures, queen captures with check and now king to h2. And now rook to d3. Anderson brings another attacker to the knight here. Uh, so how do you defend? Morphe has to play a passive move here, rook to f2, but it's not all that passive. If the knight ever moves, then you're going to have queen captures on f7. So rook to e3 now. Anderson wants to get rid of this rook uh, because once this rook leaves the board, then he's just, uh, you know, uh, up, up two pawns and there's not all that much Morphe can do. So Morphe tries the very tricky knight to d2 now, kind of saying, okay, I'm going to capture on f7, but Anderson says you are more than welcome to do that. I'm just going to play rook to e2. Now attack your rook, uh, double attack on the knight here. You know, you, you can have your f7 pawn. So Morphe grabs it. There's really nothing better. Queen captures on f7, king to h8, and now knight to e4, offering the knight like this so he can grab Anderson's knight on e6. Anderson first captures the rook, of course, the rook captures on f2 with check. Knight captures on f2, and now queen to d5, defending the knight. Uh, we have knight to g4. Morphe finally gets his knight into the attack. Uh, but here, uh, Anderson plays a move that's basically a slap in the face. Um, uh, Anderson plays uh, queen captures on a2. And uh, this comes with check, but... Uh... Uh, even even if it didn't, uh, there's really no way for for Morphe to utilize this knight, uh, you know, uh, for for the attack, as you'll see. King g3, queen b3, check. King h2, we have queen to c2, check. King g3, queen to c3 with check. King h2, now comes queen to c6, and Anderson says you have nothing here. There, there's nothing you can play here. I'm just going to push my pass pawns and win the game. So Morphe plays h5. He's going to try to sacrifice something, that's for sure. I mean, there's no other way to play this. We have a5. Anderson simply starts pushing his pass pawn. And now knight to f6. Threatening checkmate. And uh, Anderson now needs to needs to capture the knight. So G captures an F6. And now Queen captures an F6. If you played this, the kind of, you know, it, it looks good because the pawns are, you know, really, really close to the black king. Uh, the problem is the knight covers these two squares. Uh, the queen covers this, the king covers this. So the white queen really has no squares to do anything here around the black king. So Morphe instead plays queen captures on f6 with check. King g8, now queen g6, check. King f8, he's going to capture on h6 with check. King to e8, now another check on g6. King to d7, and now we have h6. Uh, now Morphe also ready to push his pass pawn to victory. Uh, and now there is one move that wins the game for Anderson, but it's not uh, easy as you may think. So feel free to pause the video and try to find the only winning move for Anderson uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting this, uh, well, really, really difficult move. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is queen to f3. Yep, that's that's the move. 
and uh, it's uh, not easy to realize why this is the move but to give you an example after h7 we're gonna play queen to f2 check and after king h1 we're gonna play queen to e1 with check king to h2 and now we're gonna pick up the e5 pawn with check while guarding the queening square and now okay we we are back in the game and we can win this game easily however after h6 anderson did not find queen to f3 he played queen to d5 and it seems like it's the it's pretty much the same idea, but it's not because now h7, uh, well, uh, <laughs> now h7 isn't uh, good for Morphe, but Morphe played it and uh, that that's the problem. Uh, the reason why queen to d5 isn't as good as the move we discussed, queen to f3, is because here Morphe could play queen h7 check kind of weird putting your queen in front of your pass pawn but after king to c6 now we play queen to c2 check and now the thing is if black repeats we're just going to deliver another check and if he goes queen king to b7 now we play queen b2 check uh, and now we deliver check while defending our e5 pawn that's key and after king a7 now h7 and now white has uh uh, white is definitely not losing this game uh, but after queen to d5 morphe played h7 right away and this allows anderson to pick up the e5 pawn with check so queen captures on e5 king to g1 and now knight to g5 another very tricky move by uh, by Anderson saying now okay there's there's no move that you can play here uh you can uh you know uh, bring a queen into the game and capture my knight but still I, I mean I I have two pawns uh but it's it's the best Morphe has so Morphe played it h8 queen uh we have queen captures and he got grabs the knight on g5 we have queen to d4 with check uh before starting to push the pawns of course Anderson sen centralizes uh the queen king uh, king f1 and now a4 he starts pushing the pawn and now uh, Morphe of course will go for a series of checks queen f5 check king to c6 now queen to c8 uh, but it doesn't really help him all that much king to b5 a beautiful move by Anderson now saying okay if you capture on c7 I'm just going to deliver check and of course the king and pawn endgame is winning for me because your king is outside the square of the pawn king c1 a1 queen uh, black wins uh, so after king to b5 we have king to e1 now comes c5 now the other pawn is uh, being pushed forward we have queen to b7 with check king c4 queen to f7 with check king to c3 queen to f3 with check now just queen d3 now the problem white can never trade queens because of course black is the only one with pawns queen to f6 check we have king to b3 queen to b6 with check and now king to c2 Again, you cannot capture here because, uh, well, we simply block check and force a queen trade. That's winning for black. So after king to c2, we have queen to a7 by Morphe. Now queen to c3 check. King to e2 and now a3. Our pass pawn is nicely defended. Queen a4 check. We have king to b2. Queen b5 check. Queen to b3. And it was in this position on move 72 that Paul Charles Morphe resigned the game. And the first game of the match goes to the German master Adolf Andersen. So really uh, an impressive game by, by both of them. Uh, I mean, uh, the Evans Gambit played to, to such perfection. I mean, it's really, really just a joy to, to watch this. And, uh, you know, so many things were happening in the game. Even though the game lasted 72 moves, there was constantly something happening. And, uh, uh, well, Anderson even missed that one move that allowed him to win the game. But Morphe also missed his opportunity to, you know, uh, bounce back. And, uh, well, it's it's such a, such a complicated game that you could analyze it forever and you would always always find very very good uh, you know ideas for for both sides uh but yeah uh, first game of the match goes to goes to Anderson we'll see what happens uh in the uh, in the well other part uh, of the match and uh, the only condition uh, for the match is of course they play for no stakes the only stake is their honor that that was agreed upon but it is first the seven wins that's that's the agreement so we're going to talk a little bit more about the match um, uh, you know uh, during this uh, Anderson saga but uh, for this first game that's that's it that's all the info you're getting uh, because some of you have been saying that I'm giving out too much info but that's why you have the little chapters you know, you can click on it and skip the info you can go straight into the game uh, but for those who are interested in you know uh, some history and you know uh, well basically the good stuff uh, I, I have to you know uh, say as much as possible so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank Brandon Fukuda, uh, Arnie Cox, uh, Hoav Smariahu, uh, FideChess.com and Pedro Felix for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage uh, of the Morphe Saga until it ends. Uh, thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your Sunday.